It's time once again for the only podcast broadcast exclusively on AM Radio. Best Conspiracy Documentaries Podcast. Today's episode, Indianapolis Worships a Penis. With your host, Mr. X, and the man with the plan, Dr. Stephen Michael Schroeder. I'm the guy with the announcer guy thing, and now on to you, Mr. Steven Michael Schroeder and Mr. Dr. X. So what are you up to, Steven? What are you, what's that life been treating you like in these end times that we may or may not be in there? Well, I like to try to find things that are relevant, that's in the news, that's today, that makes you scratch your head and say, why is that? Things and it's... Go, hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those things where they're like, uh, you know, a lot of people think that America is become something that it wasn't. Like it's it's lost its way and it's become something that it wasn't. And we can see that to be true. But I mean, as far as them thinking that America started off one way and it went the total opposite way is not the case. What we're what we're seeing as far as the sodomy and the uh, abortions and and all the things that we're seeing the genocide and all this these are fruits these are fruits of a tree okay you can't look at any one specific thing and focus on it and say it's wrong all these things are wrong and they're to the level of extremely wrong and that's what i was wanting to really talk about tonight the picture that i've seen uh, on facebook lately about this uh unveiling the statue of baphomet in detroit uh, yeah yeah what is it it's a statue of baphomet he's got an erect penis right just like usual well, it, it's 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 supposed to be that way because he's a hermaphrodite. He's a fertility god. Number one, number one, you got to realize that he's a fertility god. He's he's and this this is why pagans like to combine the pure with the profane. It's like why don't pagans just do their own thing and have their own pagan stuff? Right, They're not happy it's unless fun, they can man. take your cross or commandments. Don't but because to, they have to have it. They have they have to have it. It's like they they have to have it because it's like it's like bad. He's a combination of male, female, good, evil, light, dark, uh, man, beast. It's he's a combination of all opposites. So when you have the pure, like something Christianity, like say the Ten Commandments or the cross, well, the pagans don't just want to have an image of a pentagram. They want to take the cross and put a pentagram on it. Right. They're not just happy with the, the goddess. They want to take the Ten Commandments and put the goddess image on it, because not only not only does that complete them. Nothing, nothing makes a, a pagan more happier. They delight in desecration, it said. The pagans delight in desecration. And they, and they do that for a reason, because when you combine the pure with the profane, it does something. It's, it's like the whole Hegelian dialect, where you take a thesis and an antithesis, and you put it together, and it creates a synthesis, something new. And that's like okay. all, these, uh, all these secret societies, the foundation of their belief and power system is that Hegelian dialect where you take two opposing forces and you bring them together and you create and control conflicts to produce wealth and power. Right. It's, it's sort of, it, it's sort of like, uh, you know, the, the, the gun manufacturer wanting the Germans and the Britons to go to war with each other. And they supply the weapons and the guns and they get the, the party started and they benefit from the bloodshed of two of their opposing forces. I can, can you mind touching on that? Because I don't, I'm not even about to approach some veteran and be like, oh, hey, by the way, all that, that war that you and your buddies, you know, fought for, you know, so arrogantly fought for, as the guy from the movie said, I'm just quoting him. <laughs> uh, you know, hey, that was just a big scam, man, you know, uh, they just did it to make money, kill us, and, and do this Hegelian dialectic, you know, so, hey, wake up, that sucks for you, you know what I mean, How, but it's true, right, if, if, we're, if we're to live non-deceived, is it important for my dad to know that him fighting in Vietnam was was a, was not necessary, and he got rooked into it, and you know he didn't really accomplish any good goals. There was no reason for it. It didn't help defend freedom, and, and he just wasted his time. Is that well, true? Well, I, I would I would never I would never do that to somebody. I would never do that. But they need and to see, know, right? I mean, but yeah, yeah, they need to know it, uh, and and they'll they will have their own things to deal with. But as far as anybody who's willing to take a bullet for me or to stand in harm's way for me. I'm not going to badmouth most of the people that are in the military. It's just like me and, me and my wife, was. we met in the military. 
So it's one of those things to where I understand what it's like to be military. You are willing to sacrifice your life to defend the, the rights and freedoms. It's an honorable thing. It's an honorable um, not, now, granted, you got hey, Like they're not defending yeah. freedom at all. They're not defending Jack, right? I mean, and that's that's that's, the, that's the problem with that's yeah, that's the problem with deception because right, the biggest thing yeah, about yeah, deception yeah. is we is yeah, because wake up, you know, like don't go over there and fight these wars and then come back and pretend like it was necessary. Like that sucks what happened to you and we will deal with that. I and mean, you deserve all the rights in the world. You get a, a guaranteed mortgage. You know, there's all types of stuff that you get. And I mean it's that people will talk, oh, veterans rights. They don't, they don't care about the, uh, the government, doesn't care about vets. I mean, that's, that's true. They don't have enough stuff. They should have everything. But they do still have good benefits, and we need to fight to keep that that way. But do we need to keep sending new kids out there to go die for the next little jerk around? You know, no. So that's what I'm saying. No. I'm conflicted about that. Yeah, I've- Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. It's, it's, it's the whole tragedy of taking something that is good and sacred, like somebody willing to lay down their life for right. somebody, it's and then twisted. using that person for their unholy means. Right. And that's what deception's all about. And that's the whole reason why I speak and try to speak truth, regardless of whether you like it or whether you wish it was some other way. The truth is the most important thing. And it's like with Hillary, people who lose integrity have absolutely nothing to offer to anyone. And that's the bottom line. And the, the, and the reason I am so adamant about speaking truth, because it's so rare here, is because the other, the, the, the deception is not just a, a mean trick. It's not just a joke. It's, it's, it's fatal. Okay? And it sacrifices right. pure things like people's you know, honor and duty. I, oh, I'm with you about wars. I, I couldn't think of one war that Washington never thought that was honorable. Are necessary or didn't have some kind of ulterior motive or means. Right. I mean, this whole thing about Bush, you know, if they think I'm all about bashing Obama, I bash Bush just as much yeah. because it's, it's you can't you cannot be speaking lies and shedding blood. Right. I mean, you might as well be having human sacrifices like the Aztecs or something. It's the same thing. Well, it is the same thing, right? Isn't that part of the reason they do it? I mean, they, they shed that blood and it does something for them. That's it. Well, see, the whole thing is there's life in the blood. So when they have their images and they have their ceremonies, they have to shed life. And there's nothing more innocent uh, than than the the unborn or the small fetus type life. I mean, child sacrifice. This goddess that we're getting ready to talk about is the only goddess that was recorded actually demanded fetal sacrifice. And that's the state of Indiana. You know, just fetal to cut to the chase. Fetal sacrifice. Fetal sacrifice. Right. Like you know. Like like Obama, he was a pro infanticide. In other words, he had no problem with baby being out of the womb and then being killed. I mean, how, okay. how screwed up do you have to be to be like, oh well, you know, but everything else he does is. I mean, come on, dude. Like, let's really take a look at this. And I know everyone is brainwashed into thinking that, oh, you have to be pro-choice, and if you're not, you better shut up about it. No, man. Like, it's disgusting to take a baby outside of the woman's womb, the vagina. You know, you get it out of there, and then you you kill it or whatever, or you put it back. Is that what you're saying? And then you kill it. No, I mean, they deliver it outside of the womb, and then they kill it. I mean, that's disgusting. Like, at, what, at what point does that, that become just ridiculous? I mean, I think that's crossed the barrier. I think we, don't, we can't even argue about whether or not that's a real Well, it's, that's it'll, it'll be getting to a point where you can't say that because you're insulting somebody else's religion. you got to understand the pagans. The pagans are making a move right now. Okay. And see, everybody sees this statue, and, and they're like, oh, oh, my God, it's the, it's the end of the world. They're getting ready to put up a statue of Baphomet. And, and granted, that is pretty, pretty, pretty wild when you think about it. Yeah. But, but, but that's the whole thing about like having the Ten Commandments displayed. Once you open the door for them, it's like the city county building in Indianapolis. They had a menorah display, okay? And yeah. then a witch comes in with a pentagram and wants to display the pentagram next to the menorah. Right. So, of course, I, I have to get involved and threaten to sue because they wouldn't let me display my thing. And it, my, mine was just basically a sign. That quoted the the huh. second commandments being you know the the state display at the state capitol. They removed the second commandment, so I figured it'd be a, a fitting thing to have the second commandment displayed in the city county building, right. in between the witch's pentagram and the menorah. Because I told the building manager, you know, maybe you don't understand. You think it's all politically correct, and this right. is a long time ago. You know, they're just now talking about this stuff now. But I'm trying to show you that this is something that's been going on for some time now. It's just nobody realized it. No and now it's a coming freaking through. Freaking clue, dude. They don't even have a. They don't even have a, an inkling of a clue, man. Like, and I'm into weird conspiracy stuff. Like, I like it because I like to entertain ideas. I like to sniff out truth. And once I find something that's that's it's not true, I throw it out. You know what I mean? And I, I just want our listeners to know where we're coming from here. Uh, I want to share just real quick one thing, and then I'll let you totally have the floor. 
Uh, this, this dude told some story. This will take 20 seconds. This dude was making some cookies for his kids. Kids are all stoked. Like, yeah, Dad, man, make some cookies. Oh, hey, I'm going to. Well, yeah, that's great. And then when he's mixing them up, he throws in, he goes outside, he scoops up some of the dog poo in the yard, and he throws just, you know, just like a little, like half handful of it in the batter, you know, compared to the rest of it, and not that much. Then he bakes the cookies, he takes them out, and says, hey, you go, kids, hey, eat up. They're like, what are you talking about, Dad? Are you outrageous? Like, we saw you put that dog poop in there. Like, you, you think you're tricking us? Like, oh, what's wrong with it? He's like, oh, dog poop in it. What do you think is wrong with it? Well, it's just a little bit. <laughs> And that's the whole, you know, you know, the think think on about that, or you know, it's just, oh, it's just a little bit of screwed up in this. It's just a little pentagram on the Ten Commandments, you know. And it's like you're saying that opens the doorway. And what I want to say is, should we campaign to remove these Ten Commandments? Because you said that opens the doorway. So I say, let's take the doorway away. We don't even want these Ten Commandments. And by the way, we, we're against them. And here's the other thing: it's like you, it's like a joke. You go downtown and we're against the Ten Commandments. We shouldn't have it on the law. No Ten Commandments. You know how I many brainwashed idiots have been like, yeah, man, get rid of it. You know, like Democrats, everybody, and they have no clue what you're even talking about. And that's how it works. Well, right? let, let's, let's put it this way. We don't have to do anything because we've already won. And that's kind of like the, the reoccurring but theme of the whole. why sit here and let them do that? I mean, why sit here and not rally against it? Why sit here and not try to get because, rid of that? I mean, now I realize that I'm pissed, dude. Because the case precedent has already been established. Oklahoma, the whole debate about the Oklahoma monument and, the, and them talking about trying to keep it or whatnot, it's got to come down. There is no choice in the matter. It's already been ruled on. See, these things have already happened a long time ago, and people don't realize it. Judge, federal Judge Sarah Evans Barker, that works in the federal building downtown, she heard the case when Governor O'Bannon tried to replace the monument. To make a long story short, there was a Ten Commandments display at the Indiana State Capitol building. I, I, re I looked at it and realized the second commandment was not listed. The second commandment is the most important of all commandments. It has a warning attached to it. It's the only commandment with a warning attached to it not to violate it. It just That's so happens people to be... Work, you know, with a little wink and a nod. It's like, oh, hey, Ten Commandments on the lawn. Yeah, we appreciate that. And that's how they work. That's why I want to flip the script on them. It's like, oh, yeah, we'll do that to you, and it'll work, and you will hate it. But it's like, yeah, oh, the Ten Commandments. Yeah, everyone, well, yeah, I guess that should be there, right? We support the Ten Commandments, I guess. And then no one even realizes, oh, there's one missing. And no one even, so, okay, so what if one's missing? Well, it's a big deal. I, well, I don't care. You didn't care in the first place. And so that's what I mean. Like, why don't we just get a lawyer? Because I guess that's how stuff works, right? And say, hey, open this up. The Christians want it gone. Take it out of there. They don't want you putting their it's, ten it's not, on display. It's not there anymore, John. It's not there. Okay, well, there you go. So you, it's gone. But this stuff, so the doorway is still open, though. Well, the doorway is actually inside the House Chambers building. Oh, in the mural. no. Okay, this 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 is just their their spell of of strong delusion. Okay, this you is gotta get rid this of is their that, spell dude. of strong delusion. They had a monument that was there for thirty three years, almost thirty three years. Oh well, okay. coincidence. Thirty three, you say? Yeah, and the second commandment was missing, and that is an offense in and of itself that they would remove it and modify the text in such a way, you know, at least to make it to where it gave preference to Catholics over Protestants, which would be a violation of law in and of itself. That's what they wanted because to that, do. Well, it's actually a Catholic version. The Catholic well, version doesn't include the Second Commandment. So the yeah. Catholic Church is, is totally satanic, and if you are Catholic, I know you're probably good-hearted. Just so you know, you go, like, the Catholic Church is just totally satanic. Would you agree with that, Stephen, like what they're doing, you know? Well, I'd, I'd say it's the, the, the great harlot that was foretold that is drunken with the wine of the saints, the blood of the saints. The you Catholic know, his children Church that's, is the great the, harlot that's drunken with the blood of saints. Riding on the back of the beast, okay, that's which is the false prophet, which is Islam, and the beast, which is the Masonic beast, which I'm getting ready to get into. This whole, this whole image of Baphomet, once they understand exactly who it is, then they'll understand the big picture of exactly what's going on and why it's going on. And the fulfillment of Revelation has been fulfilled as far as this Antichrist that's coming, that is a beast, and this false prophet, and this great harlot that sits on the seven hills, which is Rome. Who's drunken with the wine of the saints, which, you know, when you think about the genocide of the Christians and his children, and he's not doing anything except talking about putting a posty note under the statue of sleeping St. Joseph to handle it. Okay. Now, and then preaching that, from the Quran and kissing the Quran. It sounds like the wrong thing. It sounds no, it's, it sounds like revelation. 
Okay. That's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like a fulfillment of Revelation because that's exactly what it is. Okay, well. But, it, but anyhow, the most offensive thing about this Ten Commandments monument that was at the Indiana State Capitol is it had this graven image of this breasted sun god. It's directly above the inscription, I am the Lord thy God. So that's I'm like, standing there. That's and I'm sex ritual or something, right? That causes like sexual perversion or something maybe? Or? Well, yeah, the, some, the some image big of, breasted of the goddess. On there. I mean, that's offensive, right? I mean, is that a sex deal or what would that cause? I guess we don't know. Well, she's a sex goddess. I mean, she's a fertility goddess. Her consort is the fertility god. Okay, so it's it's like Bell and Ashtaroth, or Bell, and like downtown at University Park, they have an actual Asherah, which is a tree with its limbs lopped off. And if you go on the dark side where the sun never shines, <laughs> yeah. you'll see that she actually has breasts. Okay, that's, that's an Asherah. And see, well, that's the consort. Some people are uh, the dark side where the sun doesn't shine. Uh, and that's how it is. Like, this, this society is so perverse that you can't even say it. And here's what it is. It's so bad. It's like, you know, Christians are supposed to get on their knees to pray. There's a stumbling block there because when I think about that, the first thing I think of is pornography, sex, like stupid kids in high school saying, get on your knees. Uh, and it's just like you're brainwashed from the get-go against this. It's so bizarre, man. It's like the, the plot thickens, I guess. But... Man, well, when you're in Stephen, man, because I will, I will keep rambling, so it's all yours, man. Well, when you when you when you talk about a fertility god, then you understand why your national monument is an erect phallic symbol. That's okay. disgusting. Is that why? Is that why? Like, I want to jerk off all the time, just like all other guys. You know, is that what the deal is? You know, is that why we struggle with that so much, or is that not why? Well, it's definitely a spirit of lust, and I mean, you can't help it in a in a situation where you have a government that is nothing but. Um, all about fertility, uh, pagan fertility. It's their fertility god. That's why they have an erect phallic symbol as your national monument. And they say, what's well, a Christian nation? It's like, how could a Christian nation have an abomination of desolation for its national monument? How could they have a, 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 a graven image of an erect penis of the god of earth as their national monument? It doesn't seem like you could, really. <laughs> uh, no, it, it really doesn't seem like you could. Now, let's get to <laughs> Uncle Sam. Let's get to Uncle Sam, because Uncle oh, Sam wow. represents the U.S. That's what the U.S. is all about. Uncle Sam, U.S. Right. Okay. He came into being in the War of 1812. I don't know if people know about that. Mr. Lakers, we have lost Stephen Schroeder. Repeat. Hello? Stephen Schroeder. Stephen! We have lost him. Stephen! Ah! Reconnecting. 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 Uh, sorry about that. What happened, man? Somebody, somebody must have heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, right on. I'm glad you're back. So, okay. So, continue, please. I just want to fight this sex thing. Okay, so... One of the things that... Like, we were talking to Neil Russell, and he's like, Jonathan, I don't know what, what you, your you know weaknesses are, but the demons do. And I was like, this close to being... Like, I'll tell you what it is. It's lust. That's, a, that's a pretty much the largest thing, you know. And probably you know, just being obnoxious right. it's generally irritating, but you know, lust, that's the big one. It's like, man, why can't I stop doing this? You know, I just, you know, it's like, what? I'm well, you, hey, you're not, you're not, you're not alone. I mean, I think of Jimmy Swagger, okay? Not casting any stones at anybody. Well, right. But think of some of the people you would think would which, never have a problem with that. Right. Well, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard not to. If you believe in a spell of strong deception, strong delusion, great deception. If you believe in spells like that, if you believe in curses like that, and they are real, then you got to understand why people are, 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 they're, they're like, it's like, a, it's like a heavy weight to them. Okay. Yes, but you know it is. That's all because of this. It, well, it's, it's, it's a spell. It's, it's, it's like you have a wallet right now, and in your wallet you've got a one dollar bill, and on the back of it you have the graven image. Okay, you have the the great seal of authority, which is this image of this sun goddess. Okay, and people don't realize that it's like sun goddess, sun god. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Washington D.C. being built in honor of the Trinity of the Egyptians, from Isis to Osiris to their son Horus, designed for the special purpose and intent of making Washington into a god. And this whole thing, uh, this whole thing about Baphomet and Uncle Sam. Okay, this is the evidence for the conspiracy. Everybody thinks it might be a conspiracy, but here's your evidence. It is a conspiracy. You take a picture of Baphomet. Let's well, it is a conspiracy. conspiracy. It's, it's probably the greatest conspiracy of all time. A bunch of people get together and try to do something that they don't want other people to know about. It's a secret. It's a secret plan from a bunch of people. What does that sound like? It sounds like these secret societies. Oh, what's the big secret? 
Hmm. Okay, anyway, continue. <laughs> yeah, what's the big secret? What's the big secret? The big secret is that, that back door into heaven. They've yeah, got Jesus another way secret, to get to heaven. They, Jesus comes out and tells you, hey, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. I'm the only way to get there. And, hey, you can go by me if you want to, but I'm the only way. Here's how you do it. You believe that I'm, that I'm raised from the dead and you repent of your sins and you're sorry. And it's pretty much it, man. So it's not that hard. But, yeah. Well, that's yeah, because he, he, was, like 30, he was producing you truth. You've got to start out low and you have to go through these bizarre rituals that make you just like, you know, disgusting stuff. Just weird. This By the time you get to 33, there's no way you can get out because you're going through so much just insane stuff that you're, you're connected to these other masons like you're bonded with them because you've been through these bizarre rituals am i right well yeah it's it's you gotta understand christ was speaking truth therefore it sets you free so he didn't have anything to hide right. these guys believe that you have to keep it from the uninitiative right. that way they're exclusive that makes them masters and you the slave because if yes. you're in deception and their bondage you are their slave and they are the master that's and that's why thing. these people that were the freemasons actually own slaves yeah, they were because the they had that master stuff. mentality any type of slavery mentality needs to be outlawed like people are like, oh the bible's the Bible condones slavery. You, you. Okay, well, we don't do it anymore, man. I can tell you why, but you don't want to listen. But here's the other thing. These Masons, they do condone slavery. And by the way, my mom brought home this documentary about New Orleans, you know, and the uh, Mardi Gras. Apparently, that whole thing is about maintaining the mindset of white master, black slave. And blacks play into it. It's bizarre. I had never heard of anything like that. And if you or don't believe me, check out this documentary. Leave a comment if you give a crap, and I'll, I'll tell you what the name of it is. But, you know, it's something new. And that's bizarre. Why do we have still have blacks that, that are putting themselves in slavery? And, and it's because it's a strong spirit of something, I imagine. It's just a mindset. So, I mean, people need to wake up, dude. Like, Christians don't. Well, do, you ever, do, you ever, do you ever see the logo? The what? Do you ever see the logo on the side of the New Orleans Sort of lean? The logo, the police logo on the side of the New Orleans cars? What is it? The fleur de loup? Hello. Hello. No, it's it's uh, the symbol of Allah. It's the star and crescent. Is it? Well, uh, what a coincidence, eh? Yeah, coincidence. So anyhow, let's get back to Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam was uh, he came up in 1812 during the war. The it's basically uh, William Henry Harrison said that he had to have this Indian territory because at one time this was the spiritual capital of the Indians. Are you there? Yeah, hello. Hello? Hello. Did Steve. you hear have you heard me? Yes. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Basically, Harrison wanted to take this land from the, the Indians because he said that he had to establish the throne of the true religion. Now people would automatically think that he was talking about Christianity, mm. but he wasn't talking about Christianity. Wow. And here's your evidence for that. You can go to the Indiana House Chambers, and on the wall of the House Chambers is this mural. Not only is this a mural, but there's also the false door, the door that leads into the underworld. I gotta it's see stuff sometime, in, in, man. You gotta see. You gotta take videos. me downtown one time, but let's continue. Yeah, check out check out the videos, man. I did a, a like a ten section documentary on YouTube right, of going to know. the Capitol and actually having them give me a tour. How do, tell the tell because it's it's real interesting because they they call. How do you get to it? How do we watch those videos, man? Huh? Uh, I had trouble finding my just like you had trouble finding my channel, which I apologize for working on that, getting it better, you know, ranking, getting some better stuff going, easier to find our channel, but. Uh, on yours, how do we find it? Because I, I think I've seen maybe a couple of different channels for you. So how do people find the, the videos that you're referring to? Just just go to YouTube under Stephen Schroeder or Protestant Sap. Okay. I said I did that. Okay. You, you just have just watch all of them? Well, no, there's there's different there's different uh, categories. I did different segments on different things. Okay. But the Secret Foundation of Indianapolis and Washington D.C. that gives you an idea of the the, uh, the magic squares and how yeah, they stacked a, them up and how they actually made this made this doorway, which is really an in depth thing. And then it, it, then there's also the one about the state capitol and the apotheosis of Indiana. It's it's where they changed the Wayne the Boots? state into a goddess. Right. So this is so weird, dude. Like this stuff right. is bizarre, man. It really is. Uh, I mean, uh, here's the bizarre thing. If you 
go into the, the, the state capitol, the Indian state capitol, and go into the House chambers, you'll see this mural, and you'll see William Henry Harrison establishing the throne of the true religion. And what is that? He's holding the, the gown, the train of this goddess. And it's a triple <laughs> goddess. There's three of them there. No, this triple goddess thing is, is what it's all about. It's I like the three you. stars it's of Virgo so we're talking about like, on the I don't know, show. man. I just hear what I hear that they're always holding the gown and this and that. I don't know. It's, it makes me laugh. Like, what is it? Like, what is the stuff is just creepy and weird. Like, it's real secretive and like him holding the gown means some, some big secret deal. And I'm sure it means something, but it's just, you know, don't you get tired of that stupid crap sometimes? It's like, why can't a spade be a spade? You know? Oh, wait a minute. I guess you're not allowed to say that anymore, but. <laughs> Do you ever get tired of uh, the Mason? You know, it's Stephen. It's pretty. Uh, no, it's 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 just a, it's pretty amazing exactly how detailed they they did it, all this really? downtown in Indianapolis and, and and what they did. You can't. It's like they, Any, anyhow this this uncle. Go ahead. This this uncle Sam thing. Put that to rest. All you got to do is in, superimpose. And I got this on the Facebook page on the on the, my most recent post. I got the pictures to show you nice. exactly what it is. I was sitting there and I was looking at the Baphomet and I was like, you know, I've seen that before. And it hit me like a ton of brick. It's like, that is Uncle Sam. So wow. I took a picture of Uncle Sam on the, the I Want You poster and, and transparent right. it 50% and Baphomet 50%. And then I transposed it one over top of the other. Right. The star on his hat, on his head, everything fits perfect, which explains no. because they said they didn't have a model for this. No Uncle way. Sam. I got to see it. It's on Facebook. They, and then it's a, it's it's my my latest post I put on on my Facebook page. You've got right. to see it because that to me was like the most most mind boggling thing that when you took the picture of Uncle Sam on that wanted poster on I want you poster, and you yeah, take the we, bath net, you to go transparent to both of fifty yeah. and superimposing. Yeah. Yeah. And so basically, the whole point here is this pan. Is Uncle Sam huh. this God of all things? G O A T is the God Allah. Okay, so everybody thinks that you know they they founded this this country on Christianity, de, you know, totally denying the fact that what their eyes see as far as their national monument, as far as their nation's capital, where Washington is declared to be God. Okay, all these things that prove to the contrary that this never was a Christian nation. They can't grasp the reality that these founders, you know, they was into Greek mythology. They was into Egyptian stuff. They was into Babylonian stuff. They was into the, the enlightened kind of thing. They was star worshipers. Okay, star worshipers. And the thing is, you know, the Protestant separatists came over here to escape religious persecution. Okay. And right. then you had the Masons coming over here and infiltrating that, you know, Acting like they're a Christian organization to have them, you know, the master slave thing, trick them into thinking it's a Christian organization right. when it's nothing more than bell worship. It's star worship. It's their image. It's it's their God. I it's, can't stand it, man. Like, and that's why the Indiana. We got to do something. Well, like the man. Indiana State poem. Well, the yeah, Indiana State voice. poem, the official state poem of Indiana voice. says, a pagan voice within me seems to answer to it all. Okay, that is just wrong. Yeah. And when you consider that downtown Indianapolis was where they actually had, you know, the actual image. And that that's what that's what tripped me out. Here is here is the Indianapolis Star and on its front page they quote Bible scripture. Yeah. Okay, in their backyard, they're putting up a graven image of Pan. Okay, so everybody's getting all shook up about this unveiling of this Baphomet statue. Indianapolis has had the same statue downtown for for eons before I was born. Okay, really? on his pedestal. Yeah, because this is that—that's their most sacred thing. And and see the the irony, the irony of how we beat them, was they did it to themselves. If you read that last post that I did, and I don't know if you can incorporate it into a video or whatever you want to do with it, but if you take the information that I've that I've gotten there talking about the pan statue, are we are we talking about Protestant did, separatists or are we talking about Steven Schroeder's um, you know page? On Facebook, because I'm on them both and I'm not finding it, but I'm probably not looking in the right place. Well, it, it should be on on my page. Your personal, my or your. I don't know, I'll check them both, but they're, they're, you uploaded it's, photos, it, right? It, it should be public. Yeah, I put I put an article about the uh, the whole statue thing, and then all the the different pictures of the 
the pan and the three daughters of Zavala and this whole this whole little conspiracy of them the pagans in the middle of the Bible Belt set up this major capital, okay, to give honor to paganism. Okay, and if everybody thought this was a Christian nation from the founding, then then how come you got the pagans pantheon in your capital? It, yeah, I mean, answer that guy. You know, America really can never to be it. a nation that says. Well, yeah, I want an answer to what, it. What's like, the what, answer what's to possible it? reason? I don't mean from you. I'm not saying you, guy. I'm talking to anybody that has anything to say against what you're saying. Because people are like, oh, he's crazy. Or oh, that stuff's weird. Or I don't want to listen to Stephen Schroeder. And I don't know who says that. But, you know, I'm saying there's a, some reason that people don't pay attention to this stuff. But I want someone to come on this show and give us a plausible reason as to why in the world that could possibly be there other than what you're talking about, you know? I want to hear another side of it because that's, that's, this is the only thing that could, you know, what you're saying sounds like a totally plausible explanation. If someone can give us another one, we'll entertain it. But this is all we got for now. So shut up, guy that wants to criticize us, you know, Mr. Accuser guy. I know you're out there. Just just chill it, man. Just, just please try to listen to what he says. So please continue. <laughs> well, here's, here's, here's the whole thing. Okay, you have a city that is designed. I mean, the, the Indiana War Memorial, if you go downtown, you'll find out that's an actual temple to his consort, to Ishtar, a temple to Ishtar. Whenever they would go to, whenever they would go to war, they would do sacrifices or whatnot for victory. They would promise, it, it, it's, it's, no, it's the old Roman, it's the old Roman thing, where before they would go to war, they would, you know, make promises to goddess, if we get victory, we'll build you a temple. It's, mm. it's a, that kind of thing. It's like the National Monument. You know, that used to be a, a, a stockade where they butchered, butchered thousands and thousands of cattle right there on the, on the grounds of the National Monument. No, I did not know that. That's For weird. the war effort, they said, huh? yeah, they were sacrificing bulls and oxen because that's what they have to do before they lay the foundation for these, these monuments or whatnot. This doesn't mean a switch so they were using as an excuse look that it up. Like Mr. the butcher yard. Mr. Skeptic, can, Mr. Skeptic Magazine guy can go and look this up, right? Oh, absolutely. No, no, believe me, I don't get contested. I've, I've, I put the challenge out there. There is, there is no contest. There is no contest. It's all fact. It's all out there. there it's all part of state it, history. It's part of this wrong. History. I dare you, because we'd love you to, you know, we want to be put in place, but for all we know, this totally is just a completely sinister conspiracy. Uh, like George Carlin said, oh, there's no way that a whole bunch of really powerful, w really wealthy, really strong, powerful people, influential in society would get together and have a plan of, about doing something. That's, that's crazy. That's conspiracy. Like, you're nuts. A conspiracy literally is a group of people get together and say, hey, we're going to have a plan. It's going to be secret. So people need to stop thinking conspiracy means wrong. It is wrong, but it doesn't mean kooky and crazy. So... Steven Strutter, you know, you, you got something to say to him. You got to go through me, buddy. <laughs> and I got a mouth like you wouldn't believe. So continue, please. So bring the noise. Any, anyhow, right, bring the noise. The, the bottom line here is, anyhow, this is where they was getting their power from, to be able to have his image. I mean, if you read Revelation, what does the serpent, what is the final thing the serpent tries to convince man to do in disobedience to God? He says, make the image. Mm. Make the image. Think about that. Now, the last temptation of mankind from Satan in Revelation is he's trying to convince them to make this image. And those who obey his voice and make the image, he will give them the power and authority to rule. So, in other words, you disobey God's second commandment, and I will give you the power to rule and have a mighty kingdom. That's what this Antichrist kingdom is all about. It was based on obedience to the serpent's voice and making that image. And that's what your great seal is, is that image made to the beast in compliance with the serpent's temptation in revelation to make the image and that's what they did they made the graven image and they got the power and authority to rule and that's now, how they won the and that's image? how they defeated and that's how they did what they did the graven image is the all-seeing eye it's the it's the breasted sun goddess the all it's the same eye image that, that was on the, on the thing that that eyeball you see everywhere the yeah, pyramid the, the, right yeah. pyramid with the eye or just the eyeball yeah. right yeah yeah there's, there's, there's three symbols. If you have a pen and a piece of paper, draw these three symbols. One's a triangle, right. one's a crescent, and the other one is a solar disk with a dot in it. Now, if you take that crescent moon and you put it on top of that solar disk and you put it in the triangle, that represents the face of Bell. That is the graven image of their god, Bell, which is pan, which is triangle, all. Triangle, crescent. That's what it is. And triangle, or you, crescent, and. Or you can take the triangle. 
A, a circle with a dot in the middle of it. That's circle. It's, a dot it's the it. Earth, Sun, and Moon. Yeah, what is that? I've seen that before, like a Marilyn Manson album covers or whatever. Like it's some weird, you know, weird thing. It's it's a, it's a sun symbol. Okay. It's a sun symbol. The circle with the dot in the middle represents the sun. Okay, and the crescent represents the moon, and the triangle represents the earth. And that's their triple goddess, the goddess of the moon, the goddess of the sun, and the goddess of the earth. The goddess of the sun is the Statue of Liberty in New York. The goddess of the moon is freedom that sits on the nation's capital. The goddess of earth is victory which sits on the obelisk downtown. Now, that's I've their got triple a friend, goddess, and it represents those three um, entities. Who's pagan, you know? We, we get along or whatever. It's a Facebook friend. I never met the person in real life, but hey, you know. Same difference or whatever. We get. I was like, "Hey, you're a pagan. I'm a Christian." But yeah, you know, just you know, if you have a problem with that, we don't have to be friends. But I'm just letting you know. You know, we might see Christian posts. You know, I hope that doesn't bother you. But hey, I'm cool with being friends with you if you are. She was like, "Oh yeah, you know, no big deal. I know a lot of people are Christian, so I want to run this stuff by her to see if she, you know, what she says about this because I, I bet that you know, with the if if what we believe is true that. That all other, you know, paths to God, including paganism, this, that, and the other, are deceptions from Satan, then she should, I don't know. I, I don't know. So I'm saying, yeah, maybe. Well, you know, it, I wonder it, it, what she thinks. No, it, it's, it's like other religions, John. It's, it's like other religions, okay? It's, it's like Buddhism and all these other religions. I don't have a problem with what they want to believe. But if it's like Islam, to where they say that I'm worthy of death because. I'm, I'm insulting them by declaring my faith in Christ. I mean, that's insane. Because there's nothing more of a greater insult to Islam than to say that God beget a son. Yeah. So, yeah, so if it's a religion that is hostile toward me, I'm going to have something to say about it. Right. And that's the whole thing about paganism. Okay? It's not just them doing their own little Black Sabbath. Okay, okay, it's a matter yeah, of them taking stuff that belongs to us and desecrating it. Is. Yes. And that's the point, and that's why I have a problem with pagans. That's why I have a problem with Islam, because they want me dead. Okay, <laughs> They want to desecrate what's yeah. sacred to me, that's not and the other ones want society, me though. dead. So, of course, I'm going to be well, I'm going to be a little bit vocal against the opposition against that, because, well, yeah, just, that's what uh, I do. Punk rock, you know, like just punk rock is all about being offensive and, and creating dissent. And, oh, we're not allowed to talk about this. Well, God save the queen, you know, you know like we're going to, you know what I mean, punk rock. And it can be used for a bad thing. It can be used for a good thing. But Islam is not punk rock, you know. Islam is extreme Islam. And you can say, oh, extreme Christianity. But I don't know. Those people you see, oh, well, those people you see aren't really Islamics, I guess you could say. I, I don't know. But it's, but they're not. Anyone telling you you can't, uh, you know, practice your own religion, you know, or can they do Islamics? Can they reconcile that verse? Because what we would say is, oh, Leviticus says, yeah, you don't, you can't get tattooed and all this other stuff or whatever. But you know, some of us, you know, or what we think that Jesus. Well, they, it's, from that. it's not just a verse, John. That's a, a, that, that's a problem. It's just not a verse with Islam. It's it's their foundation. The whole thing. Right? <laughs> okay, you got to understand how is how, how Islam got what? how Islam got started. It, it how Islam got started is is why they just by using terror and violence because Muhammad was in a cave one night and an angry angel grabbed him by the neck and used terror and violence on him and forced him to recite the message. And the message was plain and simple that God did not beget a son. So he choked <laughs> him and used violence on him until he agreed to recite, which is what the Quran means is to recite that God did not beget a son. That is the foundation of Islam. So it's not just a verse they can reconcile. Mm. It is the whole foundation of the faith of Islam is that God did not beget a son. Now here's the problem. Before Muhammad came along, and Muhammad came along 660 years after Christ, that's okay, weird, established Islam, he adopted, yeah, he adopted the name Allah as the one true only God because in, in pre-Islamic Arabia they had many gods and Allah was the supreme pagan deity at the time. So he adopted the name of Allah as the one God. He just and, and a lot over. of people say, well, Allah is just an Arabic translation. Right. Uh, they, they say Allah is just an Arabic translation for the name of God. I've heard but that's that. not true. The, the, uh, they, have, they have that Arabic name for God. If you read the Quran, it says there is no God but Allah. If there was no name for God, I'd say there is no Allah but Allah. Listen up. You know Allah what I'm saying? is not the Christian God. You heard it here first. Maybe not first, but you heard it here. Steven Schroeder and, and me, because I believe him, say that Allah is not the same as the Christian God. Because, yeah, I've heard that before. Oh, Allah. No, and I just wondered. I was like, oh, maybe, 
maybe to them a lie is the same thing as God, or maybe it's just like you know another word for it. You're saying no, that's not the case. You've looked into no. it. You can verify it. But just believe that it's not the same. <laughs> yep. And I, I people complete, need to understand yeah, the let's, let's difference between look. titles. An angry, an angry and then, angel shows up and, and uses violence and some chokeholds <laughs> and some you know some top some belt action to make to force That's this guy to point. say Jesus is not real or and you know like or not even that but just anybody that says God begat everyone even suggests that God had a son. That's disgusting, and you, you should kill them. You know, you're gonna say it, say it. You know, like say uncle or whatever. Well, that's what it is. Fine, it's, man. It's, it's an unforgivable sin. It's insane. According to Islamic law, it's an unforgivable sin, punishable by cruel death, and that's what they use to justify the genocide that's, that's going on right now. It doesn't Christians have unforgivable worldwide. sin because of that. So it's not just one verse that they can reconcile. It's their whole faction. Yeah, Christianity does have an unforgivable sin. Well, there's one. There's it's, one. It's blasphemy it, of the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead and say it for the people that don't know, because it's important. Well, blasphemy, blasphemy, the Holy Spirit is an unforgivable the sin. Spirit. And and you think, well, why would there be an unforgivable sin? Yeah, and the Holy Spirit, as in when something is like say given to me and it's from God, and I give it to somebody, and they say, oh, and they make fun of it and they mock it. Right. It's it's. it's Basically, the reason it's an unforgivable sin is because the Holy Spirit, when you think about it, and we've talked about this before in the mystery of God, the, the Holy Spirit is nothing more than the holy blood that was shed. If you mock it, if you deny it, if you denounce it, if you say, you know, it doesn't exist, it's not an unforgivable sin. It's just you're not going to be capable of being forgiven mm -hmm. because that is the only means of your salvation is the blood. So that's why it says it's an unforgivable sin, not because it's, it's you know, somebody trying to be mean or whatnot, but when you're, when you're, when you're mocking the Holy Spirit, you're actually mocking the truth. The only thing that conveys and convicts people to repent of their sins and turn and become born again. So basically the reason it's an unforgivable sin is because if you mock that, which is the thing that's capable of giving you salvation and grace, then you don't have it. But it's, it's not like, not like a, oh, well, that one people. time back when I was people. 10, I said, I mocked God. So I guess I'm, I, I'm screwed for life because the devil will use that. That's not true. Right. I, as far as I've heard, people of uh, someone who was kind of no. just thinking about it, about how to how to justify the you know the fact that we can constantly be forgiven, we just choose not to or whatever. If that's what we do, like we on this side of the fence, we've chosen to be forgiven. You know, let that be clear. You know, that's what my intention is. I think I'm a Christian. I've done everything to my knowledge. <laughs> but but you know, like uh, I don't know. I totally forgot what I was talking about. Go ahead, Stephen. <laughs> It's been a long day for the journey. Well, I was just wanting to sum up exactly where they made. Yeah. Uh, it, I just wanted them to, to sum up exactly what happened with Pan, okay? Because here's where they made their fatal mistake, okay? Right. They thought that the problem with Pan was that he had an erect penis and that, you know, I was having a problem with an erect penis. Which that is a good reason the, to the not idea that they were able to place over that here, man. Put that penis away. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of weird. Why should we have some erect? And it's not even just no, like I, I got, data. I got. It's erect. Like this thing is a hard. If you want to be, if you here's why we don't want it. It's a big statue of a hard cock right there in your face. Like, do you want to go there with your family? No. So that's why we don't. Yo, want it. I posted pictures of actually taking. I took pictures of uh, actually school field trips where they was taking kids and actually showing them. That's disgusting. You know, and that just makes you just, just it turns your stuff. It turns my stuff. You know, and that's what I'm saying. It makes me want to do something. I guess what we're supposed to do is get on our knees and pray about it. You know, and it's just hard for the flesh to do that. It's like, oh, someone's got to pay. Well, there's yeah. No reason vengeance to, is the mind saith the Lord. There's no reason to do anything now. They, they did it to themselves. If you understand what happened to the national monument during the earthquake, okay. That was a sign. That was a confirmation. And I have evidence where we was on the radio and I didn't forecast the earthquake. I said we was going to D.C. and I was going to stomp my foot and there would be an earthquake to that monument as proof of this. Wait, wait, of what wait, I'm wait, talking what about now? As far as this. Yeah, it's on blog talk radio. And, and I'll tell you what, I was feeling it that night. I mean, I was really feeling it. And I said... We will go to Washington, D.C., and I will stop my foot, huh. and there'll be an earthquake, and wow. the ground will shake as a sign. Because, see, see, people don't know that about the War of 1812 and Tecumseh. Uh, okay, no he was also about. a Protestant, okay? 
well, he was he was a Protestant and a very spiritual person. And he said that he was going to stomp his foot and there would be an earthquake. And you find out what happened when he stomped his foot in the earthquake that rang church bells in Philadelphia. Huh. It was like the greatest earthquake to hit this man. Is and he that foretold it. The bell, Not or is that he, I totally off with it. I don't know for sure what happened as far as the crack in the bell, but I do know that it, it caused major damage. You ought to read about the great earthquakes of 1811. Type that in so, Google so, so sometime how do you know and read about the earthquake. How do you know that using that like Tecumseh method, and here's what I've always wondered, is the American Indian religion, is that legit? I mean, like, are they going to heaven or whatever, or are they deceived as well? And my other question is, why did you stomp your foot? That sounds like some black magic. Doesn't it, though? I mean, it, it almost sounds <laughs> it like, you know, Elijah pouring water on, on an altar. Well, it's not. And it might it's, not it's like be. It's like taking just a stick and throwing it down and turning it into a here. serpent. No, I'm just, I'm just saying, if you would, if you would listen to the story of Moses mm. and him casting down his, his rod and it turned into a serpent, yeah. you'd say, well, that sounds a little bit like the Egyptian magic. Well, because the Egyptian magicians did the same thing. Right. What it is, is you use fire to fight fire. You prevail to prove exactly what's what i mean if i do something that sounds well that sounds a little bit like black magic if i prevail then it, it, it's like the whole contest between bell and yah okay let's prove this thing i mean yeah. we, we shouldn't be divided anymore if, if allah is god let's worship allah if, if, right. if yeah. christ is king then let's worship christ yeah let's, do let's this have thing. a contest that's and that's what i'm all about well i'm not i'm 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 not i'm not yeah well that's uh, that's what i'm saying i had no problem and we did go to washington dc and Can we went directly to the washington happen. monument and they got pictures and everything else well, not that day. I mean, it, it doesn't happen that day. I was declaring a thing because yeah, how, this is yeah, this is something that people don't realize it. is a reality. It, I mean, like, are we talking ten years? No, it was a it was a few months before. I, no, it was a few months before it actually happened. That's correct. Like I mean, Ninety days or something like that was like you can't deny that. Like that's not a, no, I, it's not like oh that's that's a coincidence. I mean, uh, that's pretty that's a pretty close coincidence. No, we, we had a show, and we was talking about this pan and this erect phallic symbol and the whole purpose of the phallic symbol and the power that they get by doing this in obedience to the serpent's voice, and that's how they get their power. And then once you identify their source of power, all you got to do is claim it. And it was just a matter of, of – and we was talking about the show and the whole phallic symbol, this, that, and the other, and I was feeling it that there was going to be an earthquake that was going to come to that, not because I was forecasting an earthquake, but I was calling it into being. Right. You made and it Once happen. people understand the reality of that kind of – then it changed the Making whole kind of happen. perspective. No, I didn't do it. God did it. <laughs> No, God did. I, it's just – it's doc. Well, you said you called I mean, it I'm not making being. anything Would up. You check it out for yourself. You stomped your foot. I think so. Oh, okay. Because, so then, because well, what does the, you have the, to do with it? The, the, the purpose, what you, you've got to look at the Washington Monument and what it is as a phallic symbol and as the erect penis of the God of Earth. Okay, something happened to where it was no longer working. It got damaged. It huh. got broke. It wasn't working. <laughs> really? It would have happened if I had, had not gone and and my foot. Monument. But because you know, you know why? You want to know the real reason? Why yeah. the real reason why is because they did it to themselves. Huh. They they put the, the statue of Pan back up on the pedestal. It was a new statue because the old statue just ended up missing. Okay, huh. yeah, and that, I just yeah, posted a happens, huh? bunch of articles from the Indianapolis Star. <laughs> well, I, I posted all the articles about the Indianapolis Star News admitting to it. Yeah, yeah, you did. Okay? You, to this day, you, you, admitting you have nothing to nothing hide. You, you came on on the Chris Break show and, and told the whole thing. To this, you have never hid anything, and that's what I'm saying, dude. This Steven Schroeder guy, man. If I wouldn't say it, if I didn't think it were true, obviously, and and, and investigated it to the T, but like the the news and the police let this man destroy a freaking you know statue that's downtown on display in the middle of the city. And just walk away. And he's and not only that, he said he wrote, he posted something in the paper. He wrote to the newspaper, said, "Hey, come and get me. I'm the one who did this. You know, I, I want you to report on this because you won't. You're just trying to pretend that I didn't go and smash this thing. You know, right in 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 the middle of the city. And I did do it. And I want you to tell people why. Yeah, that was the, I want that you was, to arrest me. The, <laughs> like you did yeah, this thing, that right? Was the thing. Yeah, that that was it. 
that was that was the Ten Commandments monument, and I said the reason, and this is after I already went public with it. India's biggest said, the mystery. The reason they're not arresting me is because, yeah, well, no, that's Pan. <laughs> that uh, Pan was the Indiana longest running, running mystery. mystery. Because, <laughs> yeah, because he kept, on losing, he kept on losing his arms. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> you huh? don't know who's doing it, but hey, you need to stop. It's, it's Steven Schroeder. He said well, he was doing it. He said he's going to keep doing the, the it. Whole, the whole thing. <laughs> until. <laughs> Well, there's no, there's no need to do anything else. See, oh, the thing that's is, what I don't understand. and the beautiful thing about stuff, but you say you don't need to do any more stuff, so, okay? But I was all down to go smash the monuments. So that's no, there, if you say don't, yeah, I want to say this. Steven well, says there, don't go smash stuff. He's not telling to go smash stuff. He's not riling the city up. He's not suggesting you go do that. He's saying he did that once, so it never has to happen again, right? No, I'm saying the Ten Commandments was illegal, it was unlawful, and it was offensive, and it was a desecration, and they wouldn't remove it, so I did. Yeah, I wouldn't protect like the displays so at the say, city oh, county this building. Radio show where Stephen I, is I challenged the youth that and won that. Stephen says don't go Well, to we won at the city county building. We won at the state capitol. And what we won with PAN. Anyways, and the reason we won with PAN, and here's the whole thing. If you, want, if you want to know the real reason about the PAN situation, okay, <laughs> this is what happened. They put up a new statue of Pan, okay? And it sits downtown today, and people are like, well, isn't that a victory for Pan? No, here's where they made uh, their, their fatal mistake. They put up an image of Pan, the fertility god, but they gave him a phallic that was limp. They made their god of fertility impotent. And that's how they that evolved. Like the that's a big deal, right? Get... Like they they had, what did they do? They admitted they lost. Like that's a because these people all operate in symbols, like was it Confucius or whatever that quote, the world doesn't operate in words and stuff, it operates by symbols. Like uh, that's the that's their big silver tuna is symbols. Like, oh look at him, he's got a hard penis, you know, we're totally awesome. But you're saying that you forced them to make his hard penis limp, and that and that is as disgusting as it sounds, that's how these pagans operate, and that is how they they yield themselves like that's their white flag a soft cock is that what no they made the mistake see they didn't understand like everybody else they didn't understand a right. fertility god especially pan has to be presented his image if you're going to, if if a if a goat god a pagan god says i want you to make my image okay and he's a right. fertility god and he always has a rec phallic and all of a sudden you think well the problem is that this display has an erect phallic so we'll just put pan back up but he won't have an erect penis. They think they're doing a good thing, but actually, they destroyed themselves that way. Because if this is where they they're getting their source know. of power for them to make a mistake like that, a fatal mistake, they didn't realize what they had done. <laughs> it's just like he said all along: for, for they don't know what they're doing. That's they hilarious. They put up a fertility like, god. Their yeah, fertility god Satan. in the same it's place, the same thought. pedestal, except now he's impotent. Satan has terrible workers. The federal it's, god it's, is impotent. They're filled with laziness and wrath, and they don't trust each other, and it's a bunch of jerks working for them, and they don't do a good job. They don't do good works. Not quality workmanship there. <laughs> no attention to details there, guys, Satan. <laughs> so they, they screwed up, they, yeah. and that's well, a that, big screw up, that, man. Like that, and you're saying they don't even realize it, so if they, if they made a new statue and the PP was hard again, then, then they would get their power back? Nope, it's too late. It's too late. It's done. That's why the Washington Monument, the whole thing about that was a sign. That's and I was, and we was talking about this whole thing about their fatal mistake was to put back the image because this whole image, it's this whole secret thing in University Park, this little universal symbol of paganism. It was their God on a pedestal, out of sight, out of mind. Nobody, no, nobody realized. But that was the source of the power. That was the image. I mean, when you find, and this this goes back age old battles, okay, with mm -hmm. the Israelites and the other tribes, and the pagan it. tribes. Uh, yeah, it all goes back to existed. getting their god. That that's why they try to capture the ark. No, that's why they try to capture the ark. The whole purpose was you can defeat an army if you capture their god, and that's why they was always trying to capture the ark of the covenant. Because once you have their god, nobody wants to fight because you beat their god. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, but this way, y'all proved his power by having them beat themselves. <laughs> no, they beat themselves. I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. They defeated love. themselves with their own wisdom, their own wisdom. Oh, yeah, because now their God isn't. See, back in the days when paganism ruled, when Christianity came on the scene, they said, send out the message across the land. The great God Pan is dead. And that was the message of the day when Christianity came along. Well, the beast had a fatal wound to his head as if it had healed, and he's come back now. 
Well, now, okay. So this? Pan, you can tell the world now. Pan, you can tell the world. Pan is not dead. He just wishes he was, <laughs> because a god who is impotent is not a happy, happy god. Now, is that for real? So and, he's sitting around, you know, and that shooting was, blanks, and that's for real. When you understand how they they built the city for a actual sexual intercourse between well, yeah, their god and this state two. goddess, between yeah. that federal god and the state goddess, it has it, yeah, but yeah, it, it injects the PP into the sky as constellation, and that's how they set up their their insane black magic, like Egyptian high magic. That's how, just how it works. And anybody who knows about occult stuff can verify this. You know, it's not just wacko Christians. You guys talk to you know somebody that that's, well, just knows all about occult stuff. stuff. Talk to talk to Fox Mulder. Let's say, <laughs> yeah, it's it's all about the fertility. It's all about proving himself God. So if if you have a phallic symbol representing your your thing and it penetrates the Queen of Heaven, well, then you must be the God of Earth because only the God of Earth would be capable of doing that. They set up the city in perpetual sex. It's all about this. It's all about this fertility cult. It's all about barrel worship. And the reason that they lost and the reason that America's falling, well, number one is that half of them were deceived where they didn't realize the God of Washington is not the God of the Bible. It's not monotheism. It's not even monotheism. It's polytheism. It's paganism. Okay. Huh. And their God is the goat God. They are, their God is the pre-Islamic Allah, Pan, the goat God, uh, Uncle Sam. That's Just, their deity. And I know. And the I mean, thing is, is they're, they're, they have their power as it remains a secret. But if the uninitiated get the secret, then they've lost. So, so like you say, there's a lot of things that's still there and things that are going on. How do they know they lost? They've lost because an uninitiative has learned all the secrets that they've been trying to keep secret. Basically, uh, the foundation uh, of Washington, uh, the foundation uh, of Indianapolis. So, I mean, what's the deal? And all that. Like so, and that's why. Like, what is, the, like. What's going on here? I mean, did they really lose the fight? Like, just constantly? They just totally lost? If they lost, why do we still have big, giant penises downtown? <laughs> can we can we get rid of the wings? It's the same reason you got Pan. Why is it's that? It's the why same reason you got Pan downtown. Well, he, he's impotent. It doesn't matter. It's like the Washington Monument. It's damaged. It don't matter. The sign has been given. I mean, you're going to have evil until the very last final uh, day. So you but say we've already won the war. The don't war's worry about these won. pagan statues. I'm saying they don't have power anymore. Wow. Because if God doesn't have power. So if God doesn't have power, then they don't have power. Wait, you're going to watch God? America well, just completely God crumble as power. everybody's missing it. Their God has no power. Okay, right. The Skype cut out, so... And the reason that trippy, I, I man. say that their God had power is because they did what their God commanded them to do to give them power, which was to disobey God in his second commandment. That's where they got their power from. And as long as the image was there, their compliance was there, then that means that they was pretty much still getting the power. Stephen, that's one of the heaviest they things I've ever heard, God. man. Well, it is quite heavy. I but mean, it like is the, the impact of it, like like the, you're talking about direct cause and effect. Like you, okay, you talk all about this stuff. You know, we talk about it on the show about how you know they believe as above, so below. And if you set it up below, if you set up the three pyramids of Giza with the three constellations of Orion's belt, you know, you will become a king on on Earth because of da 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 da. So I mean, but you're you, we can talk that all day long. It's like okay, I guess I can believe that. But you're telling me that you went out and and did it. And you, th this thing that they had set up for all their, you know, pagan all, with all their rules and all the way that they have to operate, they did this weird sneaky thing where they put the Ten Commandments up, but oops, we forgot the second one, and that's that causes it to be, you know, untrue, and it just causes this huge spell to be cast. It's a weird thing, and that's just what you know they do. Why else would you do it? And so then they have a spell going that does something, but then you come along and you get rid of it, and then it doesn't work anymore. That's what you're saying, right? You saw you caused that by getting rid of it. Okay, let me let me break it let me let me break it down to you so you can understand it really easy. And it goes right back to that mystery of God I was talking about, Last which time, came right. first, the spiritual or the physical. If there's a war in heaven, okay, now, now follow this because it's going to be heavy and it's going to be good. In Revelation, it talks about a war in heaven. Right. Okay. And two thirds prevailed, and one third was cast down. Okay, now if you keep that mindset, one third that rebelled. mystery of God, right? the physical comes before the spiritual. If you keep that in mind, that the the spiritual 
comes after the physical. Then you understand what we're doing down here right now is closing the doorways and the portals, the secret access into heaven to where they thought they could actually make war into heaven because they pretty much had heaven surrounded. Hmm. It, it's, it's deep and it's heavy. And I don't know if you can grasp it, but what I'm saying is as long as you can keep either, that, uh, that, that mystery of God in your head as far as what came first, then you understand that what I'm doing seems insignificant. It doesn't seem like it makes any difference. Right. But when you understand that the physical comes first before the spiritual, what we're doing is we're closing the portals that they spent their whole lives trying to make. We are, because as far as I know, in the media, they're, they're getting us all to talk about how they're opening the portals. But you're telling me that what's happening is we are closing them? How does that, how does that work? And should I be out there closing portals? And how can I do that? Okay, pretend like you're in heaven, okay? And it's a pretty vast domain, and you're in charge of security, okay? Security. And you know there's a, uh, an insurrection coming up, and you're going to have armies come in, right? So, and <laughs> the problem yeah. is, if you just had a front frontal flank attack, that would be easy to remove. But if there's portals and other ways where they can come in from around behind you mm -hmm. and get you, it's Back one of those door. things that we're basically closing off the doors the other ways. And so that's the whole purpose of these secret societies and why everybody spends all their money and their life savings to paying these people is for the secrets on how to have eternal life without going through Christ a yeah. different way into heaven. Yeah, well, and that's I mean, what what is the whole the big deal, guys? Like, why don't why don't people just accept the gifts? Like, why is this this huge tempted? Like, why are we even tempted to? Like, why would we say? Yeah, why don't when Satan comes to us, you know, every single one of us, we're just like we have, we have enough sense to say, dude, like what you're talking about is just stupid. Like, please go away, you know. Like, we're not any of us are going to fall for that because you're, you know, it's just wrong. Like, wh why are we even? Like, he is so wrong. Like, why, are, you know. It's just weird. Like, why would any of humanity follow what he says? Why would anybody? I don't get it. Like, he's just well, obviously wrong about it. Like, why would Beyonce? Why would Beyonce endorse Sharia? It'd be like, why would Beyonce support Sharia law? Why would gays yeah. and these people be supporting Islamic law? I mean, you got to think about it. They're throwing them off of roofs and tall buildings, but yet they would they would condemn a Christian over an Islamist any day. Yeah, uh, who's throwing? Why them? is that? Well, when you're talking about spells, strong delusion, and lost souls, that's what it's all about down here. When they're talking about lost souls, they're not saying they're lost just because they're confused. They're saying they're lost because they don't even make sense to where when you ask them why they're doing what they're doing, they give you a logical explanation why they do it. That's how lost the lost souls are. Right. They're pretty lost. And that is weird. I mean, that's why. What do you think? Did you ever watch those uh, Christians versus atheist debates? There's a. Uh, I wish I could come up with the guy's name, but there's one guy that I always like to watch. I feel like he's, ever, I don't know, they get tiring after a while because it's just like, how long can you bicker back and forth? But they're interesting. you ever get into that? Uh, no, I... Yeah, I'm not sure if it's fruitful or not, but you know, they, people always like, oh, you're afraid to debate because you're stupid. There's some people that, you know, take them up on. There's this one guy in particular who's real good. He's, a, he's an Indian guy, like, you know, India, the country, India, I don't know. But forget his name. I'll remember as soon as we stop this broadcast. But. Well, anyway, Stephen, I mean, you mentioned um, having, uh, having to get off of a, you know, be done by now. Is that the case, or do you want to keep going? Because I'm down to do whatever you want. Well, I'm pretty much done, and uh, I got to get the dinner cooking, so I better get that cooking. Okay, well, next week. Uh, so I guess we could call. I do want, there, is, there is a question I do want to get to. Um, what you know this guy asked a particular question i'm gonna do a little bit of research on it myself before we answer it. i just want to see his argument and then i want to run it past you and you can check it too but basically he's he's questioning whether or not jesus even existed and he's also questioning if if jesus did exist whether or not he fulfilled the prophecies and he's saying that he did not and he's like check out this website and i was like i, ha I haven't had time yet and i was like oh, i gotta ask steven about this so maybe we can tackle that next week for you know 10 minutes or so do you think so or what were you planning next week Oh, yeah. Sounds good. I'll look into it myself and uh, come up with a good answer. All right. Sweet. Yeah, I'd like to do that. You know, field, field questions that aren't abs absurd, but, you know, create a dialogue to say, hey, you know, we're, we're not just stupid Christians. You know, we actually have thinking thoughts. And, hey, if you give us a chance, we'll actually show you why, you know, it yeah. actually makes sense. So bring it on. You know, any questions you got, send them in and we'll field them. I mean, we're not, we might not have the answer, but we'll give it a shot. Yeah. At well, I think maybe we should pray next time, too. Do you want to yeah, close in prayer, serious. Stephen? You know, you want to close in prayer? Um, I would just 
pray that people would have their eyes and ears opened and they wouldn't be in deception and bondage. And I would, I would pray that things could be different, but the way it's written is the way it's going to be. And hmm. that's, that's basically the only thing we have time for. The only thing we have time for. I mean, you can pray all you want to. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess but not. the reality <laughs> is it's like voting. So you're saying don't pray, but we should do that's the I was only thing that praying is all you can do. You know, I was taught. No, I mean, it, 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 says, it, says, it says the it says to pray without ceasing. Right. But it's sort of like, I don't know, it's sort of like paying ties to Benny Hinn. You got to understand what you really what your purpose is. If you're praying, it's like voting. They want to try to change things. And if yeah, you're praying to try to change what the word says. You're not really doing anybody a favor, okay? That's what I'm saying. Mm. It's like voting. You think you can vote some Christian pastor in and he's going to change this whole Antichrist kingdom and it's going to be turned around? No, it's going to go exactly the way it was written. So if you want to do something for God, mm. I always say start your day and end your day with appreciation. That's the way our people did it. That's the way the Cherokee did it. When you get up, you give thanks to the master of life, the creator, the one who gave you life. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Well, it should be appreciation. I have appreciation, and my prayer is for appreciation that the saints will appreciate that they don't have to, you know, have their heads beheaded or be drowned in a tank or set on fire, right. that they're living in a place right now to where that's not happening. Show some appreciation. Prayer isn't going to change anything as the way it was written is the way it's going to go down. Okay, and that's why it says, let the righteous be righteous still. Let the unjust be unjust still. Huh. If the time has Don't come to where there is, there's no deviation plan, it's going down. But we're supposed to go save What's souls, that? right? Like people that God puts in your place, like we're supposed to still be kind of spread the gospel, right? Or am I wrong about that? Is it just party time and it is what it is? And we no, until, until your last dying and until your last dying breath, you should be trying to save a soul. Okay. The, the guy's uh, about to chop what, the head off. You're supposed the most to effective way to save a defense. soul. Well, bring these boys to repentance. Uh, you can you can do what you want. I'm not that saintly. Okay. I don't mind being, being a hardcore Christian and making rap, so things easy. And then thistle. And he was like, even though they're about to kill me, Lord, bring this boy to repentance. And his killer walked up on me. He's like gangster rap, but he's talking about like you know following Jesus. But that was one of his lines. You know, even if these dudes kill me, Lord, bring them to repentance. Yeah, that's the first time I heard that. I was like, wow, that's like to your dying breath. You know. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what Christ did, and that's what others did. I don't know if I would have that kind of grace, yeah, or if yeah. it's necessary Even for me. Yeah, I mean, that I mean it's honor, it's I honorable, like that, but yeah. I would, it, it's, well, if I was um, by myself, it's, it's one thing you turn the other cheek. But when you have to provide and protect for others, you can't have the mindset of being the yeah. sheep led to the slaughter. You have to be the lion. Right, and I'd like to. Yeah. So I'll catch you on the next next podcast. And I, there's one more thing I do want to say because I remember, like, the, the the unpardonable sin or whatever. I do want to say that whoever you are, whatever you're doing out there, no matter if you're the most illuminated Illuminati MF or out there, you know, Mr. Eminem or whoever MK Ultra guy himself, Jesus will save you right now, even if you in the middle of raping some boy, which is disgusting. But that's I'm just calling out to everybody, man. That's just what it is. He forgives everything. And Stephen, correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, there is no unforgivable sin except for constantly blaspheming the Holy Spirit. If you wake up tomorrow and say, F you, God, well, you know, and you do it again the next day, that's to my understanding, that's the unforgivable sin. Just constantly being a stone heart, it's just a jerk, you know? <laughs> as long as you're willing to, to say, hey, God, I yield to you, teach me, then, then you can be saved. Am I right? Absolutely. All right. Well, yeah, and that's the good just, news. Uh, right, that's the whole, the gospel is good news here. Is. We're at good news, you know, not bad news. The world is not going to end, or if it does, there's good news. You know, Christians have good news. So st- please, you know, hopefully get used to Christians yeah. making sense and being good. Cool. news is we won. So some of us out here, Stephen and I, they're not the only two. We're super cool, though, man. I guarantee it. No, I mean, I'm a big nerd. What I'm saying is, we're cool as in we accept you and we're reasonable and it's like, oh, I hate Christians because they do this, this, and this. We don't do those things. We do other things, you know, da, da, da. So please don't judge us all. And, you know, if if they if someone says you should kill us all and cut our heads off, please at least, you know, maybe question it. But we know what's going to happen, so it is what it is. <laughs> all right, man. Take care and I'll, 
I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot, Stephen, man. I enjoy doing this, and thanks for giving me your time. You know, I'll be talking to myself and a computer without you. So thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate it. I hope, you know, I hope we're doing a good thing here. No problem. You know we are. All right. God bless you. Love you, man. We'll talk to you later. Peace. All right. Peace.